Ah, the perennial holiday tradition of Christmas movies in December. But wait, are there movies out there that don't have the Hallmark logo but are still considered holiday classics? We'll let you know on this episode of Loop and Larry Guardians of Geek! In a world filled with intergalactic space battles, metahuman destruction on a global scale, and psychopathic serial hauntings, there's only one team who can make sense of it all. When your world is overrun with rampant pop culture, call Loop and Larry Guardians of Geek! <laughs> nothing says christmas like an explosion nothing absolutely <laughs> i think sorry before we get into introducing ourselves i think that there has never been an explosion in history that has been referenced more often than the loop and larry explosion just, <laughs> it's I, a very special to, explosion yes 30 38 times we've talked about this explosion so <laughs> just saying well, happy it. holidays, everyone. I am Loop. And I'm Larry. And this is Guardians of Geek. And thank you so much for joining us. Uh, we're able to get two podcasts in this month. Two. I know. We take a whole month off, and then all of a sudden we cram pack everything in. <laughs> it's a Christmas miracle how we are able to put this together. <laughs> so today on the show, we're going to be looking at um, Die Hard. Is it a Christmas movie or is it not? And we'll kind of review the, the movie as well. And also, we're going to be uh, just looking at a few other little things. We're going to do our, our, two, our best Christmas movies, Christmas movies we love the most, and the ones we hate the most. Yes. Okay, yep. we'll talk about that. But first, but coming first. off our last podcast, we're going to go to the Star Wars Control Center with Larry. <laughs> Larry, what, what has happened in the last day or two? Well, there has been some, a major update. Uh, since our last podcast regarding the uh, the uh, Star Wars n news news front, yeah. um, just this morning, I mean, we're we're uh, recording this on uh, the twenty first of December. Just this morning, uh, John Favreau appeared on Good Morning America to talk about the big reveal and. Spoiler alert, if you haven't watched um, the last episode of Mandalorian, we're going to talk about it in three, two, one. Here we go. So uh, <laughs> he was talking about the big reveal, the post-credit scene where uh, Boba Fett sits down on Jabba's throne, kills Bib Fortuna, yeah. putting an end to that storyline that we've been waiting to find out about. And, um, <laughs> and then they announced that uh, the book of Fett, it, the book of Boba Fett, is coming in December and people freaked out. What is the book of Boba Fett? Is it literally a book series? Is it a comic book? Is it a TV show? What's going on? So uh, originally we had thought that season three of The Mandalorian was, was also happening in December, 2021. So we're like, well, if it's a TV show, are there gonna be two TV shows at the same time? Yep. So that's kind of what we had thought. This morning, uh, John Favreau cleared the air and revealed that uh, the book of Boba Fett is actually going to be premiering in December of 2021 and doing its run. It's already in production. And then after that run is when they're going to start production for season three of The Mandalorian. Oh, cool. So he, so he didn't give an actual date for season three, but I think yeah. we can assume probably maybe December of 2022 is when we'll get back into those characters is what he said. So it doesn't even sound like they've started production on season three of Mandalorian. They were focusing all their attention on this Boba Fett series. So that's pretty awesome. So it won't be double series this year, but that's okay. Because you no, want we'll, we'll sure take a Boba Fett for sure. Oh, that yeah. was so cool. What did you think of the Mandalorian final episode? Because we haven't had a chance to talk about this yet. Because that came out after all the, our last podcast. Yeah. And uh, like, how amazing was that episode? Well, after I stopped crying, <laughs> which was about an hour later, I, uh, I I had to watch it a second time. That was that was probably to me one of the best Star Wars stories in the history of Star Wars. There were so many cool reveals. There was like the, the massive, like, I don't know how they kept the secret of, of, uh, of Luke Skywalker reappearing. Oh yeah. He did and his X-Wing showed up and then he had the cool hallway fight and the, uh, it was just awesome. I could, I could just see you at home when I was watching it, like just freaking <laughs> out during that whole last sequence of uh. that. It was like literally tears. Like there were literal tears in my eyes. And then the whole like having to say goodbye to Grogu and, oh, 
It was too much. There's so many like <laughs> cool moments in that too. That I just because I just finished watching the Clone Wars yep. when Bo Katan like says to Boba Fett, "You're not a Mandalorian," and I've heard that voice like a million times before or a thousand times before. I'm like, because yep. I was wondering how she would react to him because she she's worked directly with the clones, so she knows exactly yes. all about them. So that, I thought that was a really cool sort of reference back to to clones and all yep. that stuff. So, and and the other the one other thing that I thought was awesome that. It didn't. It was. It was a pretty quick scene, but it was right near the beginning when uh, Boba Fett took over the uh, the the ship uh, in order to to um, get the clone doctor. And the the pilot is so angry at um, at uh, Cara Dune and talks about how the, he was on the Death Star when they blew up Alderaan. Oh yeah. And then you know she said which one, and he's like, well. He, you can be funny you can make jokes but millions of people died on that death star and i thought finally they're actually recognizing the fact that th that was like a massive genocide like there were millions of people who worked on that 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 death star i mean they're all you know uh imperial so they weren't necessarily you know on the good side but they're just they're people too and yeah. they all were obliterated in a second like millions of people and i thought it was so cool that they finally so you could see why just like an average imperial pilot would be so mad at the rebels because his whole world was destroyed in like a second the same way alderaan was i just thought that was a cool yeah that, that was a really cool scene too it's funny because that guy was on um the last uh, season of agents of shield Oh, like, really? So as soon as we saw him, I was like, oh, there's a dude from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And so, ah. of course, um, the, what's the uh, girl that's with Boba Fett? What's that character's name? Oh. Um, she, she was also Benic, obviously Benic, on it as well. So Yeah. Benic gonna, Rand, I think that's her name. Benic, yeah. Something like that. Yeah. She was on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. as well? Yeah, she was like a regular on it. Oh, really? Well, there yeah. you go. Agent, Agent May. So she was oh, on okay. it. Oh, But yeah, yeah, it was pretty cool. Oh, oh, it was great. It was so good. I'm so satisfied. Like, if for whatever reason they decided that was the last season that was it for mandalorian i still would i feel like i'd have a pretty good i'd feel pretty good about that series like, what, that was what, what did event. what did you think of uh the the de-aging on on the face like the like some people were like hate it and other yeah. people love it i thought it's it looks cool i personally i yeah. like if you have the technology to do that then go for it that's what i think totally. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I thought it was I thought it was as good as when they did it for uh, um, Carrie Fisher in Rogue One, and they de-aged her so that Princess Leia, a young Princess Leia, could be on there. I thought this one was just as good. Like, I mean, of course we know it's not real, so like the lips were a little bit off, but generally I I totally bought in. I thought it was great, and from what I understand, that was actually Mark Hamill. Like yeah. they actually that was him standing there and he he lifted up so he was delivering the lines they just digitally manipulated his face so the rest of him his hands and his body and everything that was actually mark hamill so he was on set so the real luke skywalker was on set doing the things which made it even cooler <laughs> I, I think too like if it's if it's just a cameo kind of like that where he just comes in for a few minutes might as well if you have a chance to use that technology and be able to do that then do it if, yep. if he was going to be in a whole season it was based around luke skywalker then get an actor to to play him because yeah it's just it, it would be too much i think it'd be just be way too expensive too to to have to enhance him for an entire thing but just for a, a quick cameo in a, in a show like that you you probably won't see him again like that's probably his only time you'll see him well let me just stop you there uh -oh. Because there is a new rumor. Uh oh, back new to the news rumor. desk, Star Wars news desk with the Larry. Breaking, breaking right here. Okay, yeah. That, that there is a Luke Skywalker series in development at uh, Disney Plus. So it's right now it's in development, which means that it's they haven't you know, like written scripts or anything like that. But they are apparently working on a Luke Skywalker series, and there is a chance that it could be Sebastian Stan. I've heard that, yeah. Who, who may take the role. And if you look at the, like, there are a lot of comparisons between Sebastian Stan and uh, young Mark Hamill. And he looks just like Mark Hamill did when he was young. Yeah. Like, he could totally, if they give him that hair, that swooping 70s hair, he could totally pass for a young Luke Skywalker. So if they do this series and they hire Sebastian Stan, I think we're good to go. Because the other thing I heard was like that Mark Hamill would be doing it, but he'd play a curmudgeoned old Skywalker who likes to milk things. Yes. Yeah, so that's what I heard that, but I'm not sure if that's an actual <laughs> that's really fact or fiction. I don't, know. I don't it's, know. They're actually they're actually thinking about calling it farming with Luke. <laughs> Just him angry the at the world and farming. Yeah. <laughs>
that's that's the new series yeah perfect <laughs> so that's all the star wars news i've got for today. awesome awesome yeah. well this <laughs> is our uh, die hard christmas special and uh before we get into die hard let's talk a bit about what what are some of our favorite christmas movies and which ones that we are not a fan of and let's start with ones that we love and so uh larry what's what's your favorite we're each going to do two of each. So yep. let's, let's start with you with your favorite Christmas movie. All-time favorite, bar none, A Christmas Story. That's a classic. Yeah, I, I love Ralphie. I love everything about this movie. Like, there is literally, I could watch this movie all through the year. I just, I think it's great. I think it, it totally captures the feeling of that era, even though it was born then. But my dad watched it. <laughs> Uh, with me years and years ago and he was he was the same age as uh, Randy the, the little brother at the time and he actually was like this is right like the little orphan Annie stuff and this was like he totally it was a huge flashback for him <laughs> so it's pretty cool but it just it's just so classic like everything about it Scott Farkas the bully who comes and chases them it's just i love it i just think it's i think it's perfect it's, it's, it's literally it's probably in my top 10 movies of all time as well. oh yeah the yeah. And, and so many pop culture references have come from that movie as well with the red rider bb gun yeah. and the kids getting his tongue stuck on the pole and it's just it's just yeah. such a great great story and it's it, and it's just funny start to finish that movie it is it's so great it's so great so what, right, do you, well, what have you got? What's your what's your number one? I, mine again with the with these Christmas movies, they they kind of change depending on what you want to watch or whatever. But one of my one of my two is definitely Elf. It's got it's it's updated enough that it, it's funny, but it's just funny from start to finish. It's heartwarming at times. It's just it's such a great um just a great movie will ferrell is so good in it like this is yes. like the movie for him to be in like i yeah. i'm i had watched a, a thing about how they made it and there was some other people that could have played this role but uh will ferrell was pushed throughout the whole thing they had him attached the project right off the top and uh he's just so good at so good in it it's just it just it's one of those movies that really puts you in the christmas spirit if, you, if you're not already in it it's just, it's just happy like it's just a happy you just feel good yeah. after watching it you just feel good and james yeah. Conn's so good at it too like as oh, the yes. dad, like it's just the, the whole movie is just great. Now yep. I got to go watch it now. It's so, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back in two hours. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. Yeah. What's your next? All right. Next up, uh, going with another classic national lampoons for Christmas vacation. Oh yeah. That's another, see, that was another one I almost had in my two. Yeah. That one. So yeah, that's I mean, another, again, so many pop culture references from that and so many, huge. so many visuals. It's funny. I find with the vacation series is funny because the first one was fantastic. Yep. European vacation. <laughs> not great but then they came back with this and it's so good yeah it's so good like i i feel i almost feel like now national lampoon's christmas vacation is more of a cult classic than the original vacation oh yeah and for vacation sure. vacations in my top 20 movies of all times as well like the original vacation but christmas vacation just became like a cultural icon like i mean you're right with cousin eddie and him dumping his his chemical toilet in the sewer and <laughs> and and all of those i mean how many people have actually went gone out and bought one of those marty moose uh glass i own one <laughs> yeah i do too <laughs> I mean, it's just so, it's just so iconic and it's so fun to watch. It's just, yeah. <laughs> I think the secret of, the, of that one and the original vacation is that there's just a lot of references that, of things that actually would happen in your life. It doesn't get too yeah. far fetched really. Um, yeah. The uh, other than the toboggan scene or whatever that, what was that <laughs> called? Like, <laughs> Yeah. The, the, the uh, saucer. But, yeah. but there's always like all the, you could, that could, happened like to any family like it's like there's always the dad that has to show the kids how to go down the toboggan gets hurt or like the, the 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 too many christmas lights like all that stuff is so well done and i think yeah. that's what was good about the first vacation because you can relate as characters as humans like of the things they were going through whereas the european got a little out there it wasn't it just yeah. didn't like have that sort of family sort of element to it that the other two did so I, but right. I, yeah it's such it's so good that is such a, a fantastic movie and the other thing that i love about it is that it is so 80s like if yeah. you look at the julia louis dreyfus um margo and todd the next door neighbors are <laughs> so right. they're so like yuppies yeah like with their everything in their house is like 
pastel colored and they have they do their like workouts but and they drink their plastic water bottle like it is so 80s and <laughs> and that's part of the fun of it too is that it's like the the time they captured the time i mean that's when it was shot so that's what it looked like but it's yeah. just it's just so fun to watch, go back and reminisce about that <laughs> yeah that's definitely a classic and that was almost in my top two uh the other one i have is another christmas classic it's a black christmas oh right that's a fun <laughs> one <laughs> I do love a good horror movie, and I don't know why. I just love Black Christmas. I mean, it has that Christmas feel because obviously it takes place at Christmas. Yep. Um, the sorority sisters are sort of like staying. Some of them are staying there for the holidays, and of course, there's a killer. Why wouldn't you want a killer in in, in the Christmas thing? But it's just, it's yeah. a different type of Christmas movie, and not yeah. the same as you're usually used to seeing. And yeah. I just I I tend to watch it almost every single Christmas. Like I love it. Like it's just awesome. it's just so good. Like it's just such a good like it's Canadian too, which I love. Yep. Like just yep. just small canadian movie and margot kidder's and, in it and, and uh, wasn't it sorry wasn't it also directed by bob clark yes who also directed a christmas story yeah 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 ah! <laughs> there's a combination right there but yeah, yeah it's just so good like it's just such a great great film and yeah. it started like a lot of the slasher films and and all that but it's just uh i it's just one of those christmas movies i just love like it's like it's not a it's not like a christmas like you would we'd expect Nope, but it's it's still a great a great film to to watch every Christmas. It is. Now, did you uh, did you watch the remake? I have not. Uh, so it, that could I, that could have made it into my bottom two, but it, no. <laughs> I, didn't, I haven't seen it yet. I heard it's that's, not great. I heard like I heard. a lot of the magic of the of the original. Like in most times when they remake something, the the magic's sort of gone. Like the yeah. So we'll see. Yeah, I just I just wondered what your take was on that. So now you're gonna have to watch it. I, I do plan to watch it because I do want to see what they what they did with it, and I'm yeah. sure it's totally different than the original. So I'm sure. Yeah, there was no point. That was one of those like, why, why, why would you, why? Just, why? just make it something different and call it something different. Like yeah. you can even use half the same plot, but exactly. just it, it's yeah. ruining the Christmas spirit for me. It is. <laughs> <laughs> so those are our top two or top four best movies. Yeah. Let's move into the let's move oh, into God. the not so best movies. <laughs> what's what's your number one least favorite? Okay, well I'm gonna start with one. Uh, you know I love wrestling. I'm a yeah. huge wrestling fan. Yeah. But when Hulk Hogan decides to do a, a Christmas movie, not good. <laughs> Santa with muscles came out in 1996. What? Have you never seen this movie? I, I've literally oh. never even heard of this movie. You can actually watch the whole thing on YouTube if you want to watch it. It was a, it was a theatrical release. Um, it had uh, Hulk Hogan. Of course, he, this is like I think that the year that they did this or put this out was the year that he turned to Hollywood Hulk Hogan when he like, okay. like when he turned bad for the first very first time with the NWO and all that and wrestling. I think it was the same year, but he plays this like this kind of a hole millionaire who uh, ends up uh, bumping his head. He puts on a he's getting chased by the police. Puts on a Santa costume to go in disguise. Bumps his head. Then he thinks he's Santa Claus. Of course he does. Why? Yes, and then why, there's, why would you the, not think that? And then, of course, like Ed Begley Jr. plays an evil scientist with a bunch of these <laughs> other – he's got minions that all have special powers, and he's oh. trying to buy all the – and, of course, he's trying to buy an orphanage or take an orphanage away because underneath that orphanage is a bunch of caverns <laughs> with, with these, like – I can't even explain it without laughing. <laughs> with these caverns that have these crystals that have these, like – energy storing powers like they could explode and do all sorts of things so he's trying to mine them but he needs to buy all these businesses above it these secret caverns uh, underneath so you know it sounds logical so and how, then, how, how does this have to do with christmas other than the fact that well, he thinks because hogan brings everybody together like he because he's oh. of course one of those like evil kind of like people like a kind of a bad person but then learns the spirit of christmas and and uh, right. Mila Kunis's first role is in this movie. She's really? Just, like, she's one of the orphans. She's just a, like she's like a main character, but she's so this is historically yeah. significant. This movie. <laughs> I don't know. If I'd go that far. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it is like it is almost unwatchable. It is so embarrassing. Like it's just it's so bad. So you know bad. I'm gonna watch. Yeah. I'm gonna have to watch it. You, you, if you watch like the first like ten minutes, it's just so cheesy. It's just as cheesy as you can get. Like. I I love, everybody, I love, everybody's super overacts in it. Let's put it that really? way. Like, really overacts. Like, I love movies that are so terrible that you can watch them for free on YouTube. <laughs> like, when a movie's like, just for free on YouTube, you know it's not a huge high quality movie. <laughs> no. Like one of the streaming services wouldn't have even picked it up. <laughs> I mean, that's that's good quality. Maybe film Tubi right has it. I don't know, but it's it's terrible. Awesome. Terrible. <laughs> All right. Well, put that put that one on the on the old list. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a Hogan fan, so I, I like I like wrestling. So 
you yeah. think I'd, that would give it a bit of clout, but it doesn't. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what do you got? All right, starting number one here. Uh, and this is a movie I, had, I hadn't really heard. I, I vaguely remember it coming to the theaters because it did, um, but I hadn't seen it. And then my son actually introduced it to me because he saw part of it somehow. And he's like, you got to watch this thing. It's called The Nutcracker in 3D. I've and heard the, of this. Yeah, and, it, and the in 3D is actually part of the title. So it's not just Nutcra The Nutcracker and then in, also in 3D. It's actually called The Nutcracker in 3D. Why you have to add the word 3D? You know it's going to be a bad movie when you have to add oh, the God. words in 3D. Anyway, so it's a, it's a British-Hungarian movie, but it's all in English. Yep. And uh, you can stream this thing on Amazon Prime. So it's, yeah. So it's, I'll make sure it I don't, okay. <laughs> it, it, it came out in 2010 and it holds the distinction of one of the very few movies that got a zero rating on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> oh, that beats uh, Santa with Muscles 2.6 yep. <laughs> rating. <laughs> yeah, that was why we went to it because we we're like, okay, how could this have zero rating? Like a zero? Yeah, it should. <laughs> so this movie is so bizarre. So it starts out <clears throat> and it's essentially like it. On the, in the movie, it's called like the Nutcracker, an untold, the untold story. It's got a couple of different names, but anyway, they, so it, it's a bit like, okay, first of all, the production value is amazing. Like it really looks good. Like they spent a ton of money making this movie look good. Okay. So visual, visually it's amazing, but it's about <clears throat> this girl who um, sort of befriends or finds a, a doll so you're you're out right there because yeah it's, it's got dolls that I've done okay it's, yeah it's like well it's a Nutcracker but then it comes to life and it kind of looks like Pinocchio, and it's animated but it comes to life and then this doll sort of takes her into the world like shrinks her down and takes her into the world of the Nutcracker but <laughs> then they start playing music from the actual Nutcracker like the ballet yep like the music we all know except that they've added lyrics to the to the songs. <laughs> And the lyrics were written by Tim Rice, who did all the lyrics for The Lion King. And really? Like, yes. Like, this is a good, like, and they're horrible. Like, the lyrics don't rhyme. They are just, you, the music was not supposed to have lyrics. And so they, they sing a bunch of these songs. But then all of a sudden, the, the Rat King, like the, the traditional story of the Nutcracker, there's the Rat King who does bad things. So the Rat King ends up being, and I'm not even kidding, a Nazi. They're, I mean, they don't, they don't have like the swastikas, but they're, they're all the not the night the Rat King has an army of rats that are that are humans with prosthetics and animatronic faces, and they are in German World War II uh, outfits, and they start a war. And so midway through this movie, it changes from this like beautiful kind of Christmas thing to this war movie. <laughs> and then and then there are scenes of horror because this these rat things at one point they like sort of look like rats and then at one point they like open their mouths like like really really wide right into the camera like a bra and it's <laughs> so scary <laughs> like it actually made me jump i'm like what is the tone of this movie who are you trying to like who are you trying to make this movie for and and then it just it's like there's death like there's people getting killed there's it's so convoluted and so bizarre and then they forget all about like the nutcracker music <laughs> And then we're like, okay, there's like five seconds left in this movie and they haven't done any Nutcracker things in like the last hour. And then the movie ends with one more Nutcracker piece of music from the Nutcracker, just to remind you that this is the Nutcracker. That it sounds is terrible. So, it is unbelievably, like if it didn't look so good, there was, I, there's no way I could have watched the whole thing. Yeah. But it look, it visually it looked good, but I, I was I couldn't stop watching it because I'm like, what is this? Like, this is the most bizarre and scary and horrible thing I've ever seen. <laughs> That's awesome. So you have to watch it. Are those rats Nazis or Nutsies? They're Nutsies. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. Oh, it's so weird. Yeah, it's so weird. That is that is my number one. <laughs> oh my god. Worst of all time. Now I kind of want to watch it. And some of you these should. bad you... ones you almost kind of want to watch is because you want to see how horrible they are. Yeah, yeah. I would totally recommend it because it's. I I was saying as we were watching, I'm like, this could totally turn into a cult classic because yeah. it is so bad and so like there's so much you can make fun of and yeah, it's just crazy. <laughs> all right awesome. <laughs> what have you got as soon as i say this title you're gonna know why i don't like it okay 
Ernest Saves Christmas. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's just instantly like I have never been nothing against Jim Varney. I just yeah, I, I'm sure he's a comic genius. I never found that character of Ernest funny. No. I I, I, never, I, I never once thought he was funny, even when he's doing the commercials. And I can see the appeal of him though. Like I can see yeah. why people would like him, but I never liked Ernest. And I, I just <laughs> I went and saw that movie and I actually walked out. You saw it in the movie theater? Yeah. I, I, <laughs> and I, I walked out because he was really hot at the time. Like, remember, he was like, he was in all those movies. And I just, yeah. ugh, so oh, unfunny. Cool. Like, it just. So, have you ever watched the rest of it? Like, have you ever seen the whole thing? Nope. <laughs> I, I realized very quickly that I can't stand Ernest. And I just, uh, yeah, not worth so, watching. So, so you, don't, you don't know for sure if he actually saved Christmas? I'm assuming he did. I watched <laughs> the trailer like yesterday and it looked like he did. So that's good okay. enough for me. That's all. But even the trailer, I, I can't even get through this trailer hardly. This is oh. terrible. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, th those, he, they, I think they really overdid that character. Because yeah. there was like, Ernest goes to jail. Ernest scared stupid. Wasn't that one of them? But yeah, um, I can't remember. There's so many of them. Like there was, they got really into this whole like uh, thing where they're just, I remember once I saw all his movies and I'm not even joking at Best Buy on Blu-ray and the whole box that was like $12.99 or something. <laughs> it was like all his movies and there was like uh -huh. nine in there or something. Like it was crazy. Wow. Yeah, that's <laughs> not good. <laughs> no, nobody wants that. Nobody no. needs it. So. I, hope that the, I hope that they at least paid him well. <laughs> i'm sure he did all right i'm sure he did all right like again it's, it's just not my cup of tea i know there's people that love Ernest. i just never was an Ernest fan so fair enough all fair right enough. that's enough right. Ernest for one day for me yeah. okay move on <laughs> the only thing that would be worse for you is if they made yaddle saves christmas <laughs> i might actually watch that actually yeah. that, was, that was my new obsession with yaddle i got uh, <laughs> the female yoda yeah <laughs> All right. Okay. So my other uh, of the, my bottom two, my worst uh, Christmas movies is literally anything that is made by Hallmark. And I'm putting them all into one, <laughs> putting them all into one. And I can say this honestly, because my wife really quite likes them and I end up having to watch them. <laughs> and so I've seen probably five or six of them. I've seen a lot. So I can speak with some knowledge <laughs> that these are like, like, I get it. Like, I understand that they're just, like, you, you could turn your brain off and just, like, yeah. be surrounded by... But it's just so... Like, every room of every house in every scene in ev is, like, wall-to-wall, -wall, floor to ceiling Christmas decorations. Like, people's kitchens. They've, like, put garland around their fridge and, like, around their sink and around their toilets and around... Like, it's <laughs> everywhere. It's so ridiculous. And there are literally like three storylines in in that yep. that in every every Hallmark movie. It's about a rich guy who uh, like loses his wealth and then finds a woman and then regains his wealth. Or there's a, there's the the guy who just looks like an average guy finds an average girl only to find out that he's the prince of Moldavia. And <laughs> <laughs> Moldavia. <laughs> They all live in houses like behind me. Yeah, uh, my fake room here. But that house behind you doesn't even have enough decorations in it. For yeah, me. not not quite enough. <laughs> no, there's, there's always two the the uh, ad exec. They're always ad execs. Oh, yep. You ever notice that they're always in media yes. of some sort who comes yep. to back to her small town and yep. then falls in love with her old ex boyfriend or whoever. Like it's just it's they're all the same. Like, but my wife watches them all too, and I. Yep. The, the problem is, is like now I, I've never like watched a lot of the full movies, but I've yeah. seen enough of them that I can actually walk through the room now and like either know who the, who the actors yeah. are yeah. or I'll just, I'll know the movie because I've seen enough of them, like just in passing through yeah. osmosis that I actually kind of know who most of these movies, like it's, it's pretty true. funny. And there, and there's literally only like five actors who are in all of them. There's Candace Cameron Bure, who is from uh, Full House and there's, um, um winnie cooper from wonder years i can't remember her name yeah we i did a cameo with her last yes. year and i and yes. I, I said it to uh for my wife's birthday i got her to do a cameo so. because of the hallmark movies right yeah yeah so yeah. She, she totally it was, it was fun it was cool yeah but they're it's so it's the same people it's just they were basically anyone from the tgif lineup from like about yep. 1994 are in these movies so yeah. <laughs> yeah they're just literally cookie cutter like it's just i can't even imagine working on the staff of this and they're like uh, another one why don't we just like 
change the names of the characters from the last one and just shoot it again. Perfect. Good. Done. I, like a lot of the sets are kind of the same too. Cause yeah. I think they use a lot of the same sets and just redecorate them or do whatever. But the, yeah. uh, and, you can, and you can tell they shoot these things all in the summer because there's no, like there's no breath like when people oh yeah in the wind. so it's all shot in the summer and so it just like it it just feels wrong <laughs> they are a license to print money though man those oh, guys sh- they, they've got a i can't really say a lot because then my wife walks through and watches me watch like wrestling and stuff and goes what is yeah, this is so stupid so it's i mean it's each to each their own yeah, yeah. but it's like but it, yeah funny. no i agree they're horrible they, but they're not good but no. yeah we still watch them like they're yep. still there and we'll you know <laughs> It's there's it's like it's like a drug. It's like it's if we like, could choose not to, then we would. <laughs> yeah, it's like Christmas cocaine. <laughs> you can't not do it. I don't know. I don't know what that means, but anyway. Well, I guess we'll move on to the pop capacitor. The yeah. moment we've been waiting for. Let's talk about Die Hard. Let's go to the pop capacitor right now. Yep. Right, 1988, Die Hard had come out. It, another, this is back when action movies were hot. Like a lot of action movies that were out in that time, the Schwarzeneggers and the Stallones and all yep. of that had all sort of been going on. Um, this one stars Bruce Willis as yep. your your main. Uh, had he done a lot of action at this point? I don't know if he had done much at all, really. Like he had done um, uh, Moonlighting, the TV show Moonlighting yep. with Civil yep. Shepherd at that point. I don't know if. I'd have to look it up, quite honestly. I don't know that he had done any other action movies before this. Yeah, because this was be like, because so. this was just became huge when it came yeah. out. And so uh, we'll get into the debate of whether it's a Christmas movie or not, but let's just sort of do a, a quick review of it. And, yeah. and then we'll, we'll start talking about that because it does play place at Christmas. So that's our first, right off the top. We, we know it's yeah. Christmas time. So yeah. um, he's coming off a plane. Uh, so basically the, the plot is this, this tow- his wife, he has to go to a a party a christmas party that his wife is there because his wife doesn't live with him because she got a a promotion she lives in california he's still a cop in new york so he comes to visit her and the kids and hopefully get things back together yeah because they're they're still married there's some tension yeah there's some tension in their marriage it's not you know 100 percent. so yeah he's he's hoping to fix things so, so he, he goes to this Christmas party. Yes, yeah, so he goes to Christmas party. It's in this giant, like, tall building. And yeah, then basically... Nak- Nakatomi, Nakatomi Plaza. Yeah, Nakatomi Plaza. Thank you. Yeah. for the. <laughs> and mm-hmm. then, then it basically gets taken over by terrorists. Yes. And the one and only Hans Gruber. Yes. Of <laughs> played course, by because... uh, Alan Rickman. The yeah. late, great Alan, Alan Rickman. Alan Rickman. Because, I mean, why wouldn't they take it over on the night when it's, like, packed full with all the employees and i don't know why they wouldn't have waited one day later to like so it's like actually christmas eve and the building was completely vacant yeah because you could have just taken one or two hostages yeah it would have been way easier for them to just to pull this off when there was nobody in the building (laughs) unless they needed to get at um the owner well they but they did like they they wanted the code to open the vault that hold that held like six hundred and $40 Forty th- million dollars in German bear bonds, but it was in a vault, so they wanted the, this code to get to, to open the vault. But then, when the owner said, "Well, I'm not going to give you the code," they killed him. <laughs> so they didn't they didn't really need anybody because they had <laughs> yeah they, had they a did hacker. that yeah because they uh, had a hacker who could get into this vault. So yeah, basically, uh, Bruce Willis is there, who's John McClane. He's there. The terrorists come in, and he's he's not with everybody he, he's sort of in a different room so he's able to sneak away and he's then in the washroom or something. yeah and then he he so he's basically bare he has bare feet and like a tank top and he basically from there tries to take down everybody that's there all the all yeah. the terrorists because he because he's a cop but but cops can even though they're not on duty i guess you can still carry your your, your gun weapon. with you wherever you go even though you're crossing state lines and i don't know if that's the law <laughs> there's, there's not, a lot of issues with this basically yeah. but Apparently he could. So he happened to have his service revolver with him. So he was able to, you know, do the, do the John McClane thing and do the, become the eighties action hero we need. <laughs> 
Yeah, there's a lot of this movie's hilarious because it's 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 well done. Like it's 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 yeah. exciting. It, it's kind of cool. Um, so he's basically they he gets one of the radios from one of the the criminals, so he's yeah. able to kind of listen in and talk to them, and on another channel talk to the police at the same time. Yeah. Um, and kind of tell them what's going on in the building. But there's a lot of weird things in this movie. Like there's a lot. Like the, first of all, the 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 plan like you were saying is so convoluted like yeah. there's so many levels to their plan even to the point of like blowing up the top of the building that yeah. it's like it could i feel like all of this could have been done a lot simpler it was they way overdid it. like it like i said if they had waited one more day they wouldn't have needed like <laughs> bags and bags of c4 like i don't know why they brought all of that stuff because they had a hacker who could just hack in and do 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 boop boop Boop, codes done door opens take your money you're gone <laughs> like, yeah just walk out like yeah i'm not really sure what but i mean they also had like literally a like an army's worth of of weaponry that they brought in like they had like like um bazookas and like like anti anti uh um like aircraft stuff like crazy amounts of stuff that they brought in <laughs> yeah like an anticipation of what might happen the, yeah. the, the part with the bazooka made me laugh so hard because they, they have this they had to set it up yeah. and so they find out that that the police have this like armored vehicle that's going to ram the building so they, they keep showing the, the the car driving and then it shows them getting all the stuff out of a bag then back yeah. to the car driving and then them getting the stuff out of the bag and it keeps going back and forth i'm like how slow is this vehicle <laughs> it's, it's been driving for 20 minutes the bazooka actually was on like a like a like a tripod a tripod or, or something yeah something. they had time to because at one point he's drilling the tripod into the floor yes <laughs> like he bolted it to the floor <laughs> <laughs> and, then they, and then they cut again to this this big the, like <laughs> driving up i'm like like they they saw it coming like so but they had all this time to put everything together this vehicle obviously was so slow well, and you, then they end up of course blowing it up about four times like i think it was a bit overkill on the on the vehicle do you, do you remember the scene from uh um uh monty python and the holy grail where they're at, where they're the the guys are are attacking the castle and yes. they keep heading back and every time they cut back they're still running they're they're farther back and then they move up they cut back and they're farther back move that's back, exactly yeah. what this was it was oh like the tank was coming up and then nope it's still back there and it's, <laughs> <laughs> it was so great and, and just uh, the fact that they take over so they they take over this party and they keep everybody yeah. as hostages it just seems so ridiculous to have that many people. Yeah. as hostages and then the guy at the front of the building like they there's like a security guard or something at the front which they kill within seconds of getting there yes. and then they replace somebody as that that guard but it's just so like convoluted like the yeah. whole plan seems so convoluted to me but it could have been so much simpler no oh. and and he uh hans gruber comes across as like the smartest most confident villain you've ever seen and i'm like I don't really think you thought this through. <laughs> no, not at all. Like he, he, no. just, yeah, he came across as yeah, being super confident, and he had this plan, and and he knew all the steps before they did them, so he knew the FBI would be coming, and he knew yeah. like he knew all that was he he planned for all this, yeah. and uh, and I guess the idea was they take the bonds, ask for a helicopter, blow up the roof, so everyone thought they were dead, and then they would just drive off from below. That's right. When yeah. again. They could have came the next day with about four people in the building, got everything done, and probably just walked out the back, and no one would have yeah. been the wiser. I mean, really, they only needed about four people to pull this thing off. If it was, if the building was empty, if there's just a security guard at the front door, four guys, they could have had the hacker, Hans Gruber, one guy with a machine gun, and the guy to like load the money and drive the truck. That would have been it. <laughs> Like the henchmen made me laugh too because they're like the typical 80s henchmen. Yeah. Like the, the one guy had the, like the long blonde hair. And the uh, I, I was laughing though because the one guy got killed and uh, he was wearing track pants. You know? so I'm like, that's the best they could get. Like they're, they're going up to $600 million and the guy comes in track pants. That's what he like, wore well, he, to this. That was his decision that day was to I'm going to the What can I wear? I can wear pants, but I can wear track pants today. I'm, I'm going to be just that casual. That I'm just gonna walk in with track pants. Well, I mean, if I was if I was involved in something this big, I'd want to be comfortable. 
Yeah, it was. It's true. He he did look comfortable. He did. And you want you want the most mobility you can you can have because you're going to be running around. I mean, track pants. There's nothing that's standing in the way of you running down the hall in track pants because you're (laughs) you're good to go. There's a lot of scenes of them too, just like working on things in the boiler room, and I'm like, what are they working on right now? Like, what (laughs) what could possibly be needed in this room that I don't think had any effect on anything else they were doing, like in the movie. Like, there was a lot of scurrying, like a lot of like. But hustle and bustle of things. <laughs> here's, a, here's another question too, beyond like whether this is a Christmas movie or not. Okay. What was the accent that Hans Gruber had? Was it German or was it like, it, it, sw- it kind of switched a lot. Did you notice that? Like, yeah. in it? and he spoke German a few times. Yeah. So, and he, and he was German. Like when they finally, like the p- cops kind of gave details, they said he was German, but he like, he was just Alan Rickman. I mean, he, he just spoke with Alan. He sounded like <laughs> Harry Snape. Potter. Yeah. <laughs> That's what he sounded. That's what this movie is not a Christmas movie. This is, this is, uh, uh, uh what's his not John McClane chasing Alan Rickman around a, a building. This is a, this is a Harry Potter movie. That's what this is. It kind of is. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same trying to avoid Harry uh, Severus Snape. That's, that's what it is. But yeah, he, he didn't, I don't know what the accent was really. I don't think they ever determined exactly what he, what it was. The other part I love too, he, at one point he, uh, yeah, John McClane, I think it might've been his first kill. I think it might've been track pants. I'm going to call him track pants. Yeah. Um, he might've killed track pants. And so he puts him on an elevator, writes on it, on his, uh, on his outfit, he writes... Um, on his sweatshirt. On his sweatshirt, I now yeah. have a machine gun, ho, ho, ho. So he sends him down the elevator and opens up, everybody screams. And yeah. Hans Gruber comes over and he reads the, the sweatshirt. Like, he, like it n- needed to be read out loud <laughs> in, in, in like the slowest way possible. Yes. I now have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. And I'm like, what? <laughs> Why did he need to read that out? Like, it's like... As if, as if ho 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 was code for something, and he's trying to like figure no. out what is ho 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 code for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I, I was like, okay, we've we've all seen it. We know what's going on. Just move it along. <laughs> 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 so of course John McClane's stuck in this building and it's like and he's crawling through stuff and he's going through elevator shafts and he's like crawling through the the, the duct work which I've yeah, seen yeah. a lot of people going through duct work lately I don't know why a lot of I movies and things uh, I've never exciting. been anywhere where duct work was big enough for me to fit in I know. <laughs> like I've never been anywhere so no. So anyways, he gets through all that, but on the outside is the cops. So he's, you've got the, the main cop, uh, what was his name? Um, Al, Al Powell, Sergeant Al oh, Powell. Yeah. 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 Sorry, Al so Powell, he's yeah. outside and, and he's the kind of the main person talking to, uh, to John McLean inside, but then you got the, the, the bumbling rest of the crew. So you got the, yeah. well, who is the guy? It was the, the principal from. He was the, he was the principal from uh, um, the high school in the uh, breakfast uh, club. Uh, breakfast club. Yeah. That principal. Yeah. I, I, okay, so I've watched this movie probably six or seven times at least, and I have never made that connection before. I don't know why. It wasn't until I rewatched it for this podcast that I went, hey, that's, that's the principal from, from a, a breakfast club. And then I started to think they could have finished this whole situation right away quick if he had just gotten on the walkie-talkie and said, you messed with the bull and you're going to get the horns. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been it. Hans Gruber would have been like, "Whoop, sorry." <laughs> okay. Hans Gruber had to go to detention. Yes. They totally with four, could with have... four other criminals that day. Yeah, and they could have <laughs> cleared it up. No, missed opportunity. Total missed opportunity. But I, I love that he comes in. Of course, he's the. Uh, what this is what I didn't understand. He's like the deputy chief or something of the police force had yeah. no idea who the sergeant was he's never seen him before you think of either the deputy chief unless there's like divisions or something how is he the deputy chief of all of the police force but has never heard of this guy or know of him um <laughs> and of course he, he's just he makes a ton of assumptions he doesn't listen to anybody's reason or any any evidence he no. just makes his own assumptions of what is going to happen in that building like yeah. as like the typical cop like it just comes in like just guns a blazing doesn't care about anything else other than what his opinion is on it. Like yeah. with, with, with no one's briefed him on anything on this. No. <laughs> it's like, who is this guy? You? How do you even make it to chief or whatever he was or deputy yeah. chief? Cause this is eighties police guy. Eighties police guy doesn't really need to know very much other than no. he's the eighties police guy. And, and that just automatically makes him chief. 
<laughs> and in charge. That's all. You, that was the only qualification you needed to become '80s police guy. <laughs> He's police guy. And then the <laughs> FBI show up, and they're about as bumbling as he is. Yeah. Like they're they're like almost like 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 they love war. Like they just want to yeah. like get into a gunfight. Well, like, at one at one point, they're flying in a helicopter, and the one guy leans over and said, "This is just like Saigon." Yeah. And then the other guy leans over and says, yeah, I was in junior high during, during the Vietnam War. Like, <laughs> dude, I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> like, yeah, Saigon! <laughs> I think they were like nicknamed Big Johnson and Little Johnson or something. That yeah. was their names in the movie or something. Yes. Like Why they named both characters Johnson, I'm not really sure. But they did. <laughs> so basically the police had absolutely no effect in this movie. Like they were the, totally like inept in every way. Like they even tried to send people in and they could see them on cameras and basically just took them all out. Yeah. My, 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 one of my favorite lines from, <laughs> from this thing is, so they blow up the roof at one point and, uh, and the captain, the uh, breakfast club guy, his, his response when the, when the roof comes down, he says, well, uh, we're going to need more FBI agents, I guess. <laughs> like that's, that's, uh, um, I guess, I guess some of them are dead now. So I guess we need more. <laughs> Can you just send me more? <laughs> so like, that was the extent of your care. You care. You're caring about this big thing. Yeah. We'll just get some more. It's all right. <laughs> and then meanwhile, while all the cool stuff's happening in the building <laughs> with, with John yep. McClane, there's some pretty cool action sequences in this yep. actually. Like I forgot about like when he jumps off the top of the building with the hose That's and then, really comes, cool. and then he, he bounces off the window because if he can't break it, then he shoots it and, and like goes through like. Yeah, but so, then but then the reel of the uh, hose comes crashing down. So then he's like going to be sucked back. Oh, out that's right. Window. Right, that's right. And so he's like trying like frantically to untie the 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 uh, hose from his waist and i was literally like oh is he gonna do it is this, is this the end of <laughs> even John though we've McClane? seen it and we know it's not gonna do it but <laughs> yeah it's still it's still pretty exciting like they, that's the thing with these movies is that they're not like you gotta throw you know some logic throw, out the window <laughs> gotta do it you, because it's really just about the action and the action in these movies is pretty good like yeah like i mean it, and it's all real like i mean they, the helicopters flying through the city streets were all real. Like there was no CG in 1988. <laughs> yeah. So that was all real stuff. And like the explosions, when they had explosions out the side of the building, that was real. Like they actually set pyrotechnics out and blew out windows in the buildings and stuff. And so that stuff was like, wow, that's cool. You know, now it's all, it looks really cool now, but you know, it's all CG. Yeah. Like back then they, you know, they'd have to shut down like 10 square miles of cities because they'd have, you know explosions and stuff and that's pretty that was pretty awesome <laughs> one of the things i did notice it too is the uh i go back to the henchman is like suddenly the new henchman would show up that i don't remember coming in in the first place like yeah. there's like extra henchmen that are just suddenly there and i'm like why are, where are these guys coming from like where are they <laughs> like very distinctive looking henchmen that i'm like i should have noticed that guy like early in yeah. the movie but He's well, just they suddenly have, they, there. They must have called in for backup when they realized that they made the mistake of, of showing up on the day when the place was packed with people. Ah, we kind of underestimated the number of henchmen we're going to need. <laughs> Can you send in uh, round two? <laughs> round two. <laughs> there's, the one scene, <laughs> there's one scene in it that I, I totally don't understand. And it was a very small scene and it didn't like, it had no significance to anything, but there's a scene where the cops are sneaking up to the building and one of the cops hurts his hand on a rose did you oh, notice yes that? and yes. i'm like what's that about like, <laughs> what's that mean i totally i saw that and it totally caught my attention too i feel like he in real life he did that like that actor probably like brushed his hand over a thorn on a rose and, and they kept himself, it in or something and they just like... kept it in because it was like you know oh it's another moment of action the cop gets hurt i totally think that that or was they all thought movie. it was funny so they kept it in or something yeah. like it's, 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 i'm like what's the, the significance of that like nothing like i literally think that it was a mistake because it was that's exactly what happened he like literally rubbed his hand over a flower and was like oh i know <laughs> i guess it's maybe to show inept they are or i don't know I what guess. that was supposed to show it was just like it wasn't like it, it seemed like a mistake like it didn't seem like yeah. they meant to do that like no. it was I feel like it was, and they just left it in because they were like, ah, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. There's another part, too, that I thought was kind of weird, but I had to go back and look at it. When Hans Gruber first comes in, he pulls out this little notebook, 
Oh, and, yes. And I don't know what he says from it. And then he closes it up really quickly and then just keeps going on. But I'm like, what did he read out of that book that he needed that book no, specifically yes. for? I didn't quite figure out what that book was for. No, and he read, he literally said, uh, we are here today to, um, uh, oh, that, that corporate greed has gone beyond what it should. And we are going to prove that, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that's all he said. And he closed, and he closed the book. So it's like, did you have those two lines written down that you wanted to read so you didn't mess them up? <laughs> I was like, what, what? I didn't understand what that book was for because it was never no, used again. And he no. only used it in that first couple seconds and then it was like gone. Like I didn't well, know if there was something specific he needed that was very detailed he needed to say out of it, but there wasn't. There wasn't. I thought it was, I, when he first brought it out, I had forgot about that. I thought it was the Bible. I thought he was going to like quote some, like 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 a Samuel L. Jackson quote, you know, that was like super scary and he was going to, but it wasn't. That's not what it was. It was just a notebook. <laughs> was, that's all he needed. There's one other thing in the movie that kind of bugged me a little bit, which I didn't think was necessary, was the whole reporter, um, the news team, like side sort of yeah. storyline where he's trying to get the big story on this. Yeah. The only reason for it was that they could find out that who John McClain was. Yeah. That was the only reason. But there were so many other ways he could have found that out. Like when they got that other guy from the office that tried to like basically – uh, yeah, or yeah, whoever that that, yes. that weasel guy was. We, yep. <laughs> he could have easily given it up that information and that would have solved that. Like that whole reporter yeah. part would seem really useless to me. Like it didn't really the, the only payoff for that, the only reason and they 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 spent the entire movie setting it up, and the only reason for it was right at the end, they find that that reporter finally got into John McClain's house because he said this is this could be the last time their kid his kids get to say anything to him on you know, at all. So they let him into the house. And of course, the Hans Gruber has the news on the TV. Of course. In their room. Right onto then. the station of the, uh, onto that news station. And then the daughter says, um, mommy, daddy, come home. And that's when Hans Gruber realizes that, that uh, John McClane's wife is one of the hostages. And it was because of that news, that little girl saying, mommy, you need to come Yeah, home. but I mean, that could have been said by that other weasel. Like that, like exactly. he could have given up that information then that whole storyline. And other than her punching that guy at the end, like the reporter, yeah. what other use was that whole storyline? No, not, nothing really. <laughs> I guess just to show how big maybe the whole thing had gotten yeah. or I don't know. Like the, that the whole city was involved. And, and if you get a, ki a little kid involved, then it becomes more like and It's personal. something or something i don't know i don't know <laughs> but yeah. so but it, it, well, we gotta, you gotta go back to the action the action is the thing that's yeah the, the action's a key reason. on this it's yeah. still a great it's still a great movie as far as it like is. just the setup is cool the, the the actual like aspect of him hiding in this building away yeah. from everybody and because how many times have you been in like a, a hotel and thought of like oh like where would i go like where yeah. would i hide in here like just hit in this playground of this giant building that he could go around and hide in. Like it was kind of, yeah. it, that was so cool. And, and Bruce Willis is great. I like, love Bruce Willis. I, I don't think, I don't think anybody else could have pulled off that character the way he did. Like, yeah. I, I think he was totally believable. Like he, you, you knew that he loved his family and he was still, but he was still such a, like a, like a hardcore, like cop and, like action star but he was he had a soft side too and you know the few cool one-liners is yippee ki is so good <laughs> oh yeah like it's, it's, it's so good and the thing with bruce willis is like this movie's a i guess it could be i mean it wasn't at the time but it could be considered a little bit cookie cutter but he didn't take a lot of those type like where schwarzenegger a lot of his movies were kind of the same like yeah he, he did a lot of different types of movies past yeah. then that were so good like and, and, and it kept him fresh as an actor it's like true. throughout his career yeah, he's great. I, I just, I mean, he's one of the reasons why I think this movie is so good is because yeah. he is so fun to watch. Like, like it wouldn't have worked with a Schwarzenegger or somebody no. like not, not like the charm that he kind of brought to it. Yeah. And that's it too. He's very charming. Like you, you like him, like you yeah. like him. So you, you like want him to succeed. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. So let's d debate that. Is this like we may be on the same side, but is this a Christmas movie or not a Christmas movie? Well, it's funny because until this whole debate started like a few years ago, because it hasn't always been like nobody's people haven't been talking about this forever. It's only been in the last, I don't know, a bunch of years, four people, years or something. Yeah. Yeah. I never thought of it as a Christmas movie. Like I never, until somebody mentioned it, it never occurred to me that this was a Christmas movie. This to me, it was an action movie. Yeah. So I never really thought about it. But then once the debate started, I was like, hmm, 
okay, well, I mean, it does take place at Christmas, and they do reference Christmas a lot, and yeah. they do actually play some Christmas music in it. <laughs> so maybe it is. Yeah, like what defines a Christmas movie? Does it have to be like a Hallmark type movie or can it be just a movie that's set like Black Christmas, which happens to be set yeah. at Christmas time? And, uh, and that's sort of the motif that they're using for this, right? So it's, I don't know. It's hard to say. Like, I, like did you read like if the intentions of, of the directors were for a Christmas movie? Like, or yeah. like. Oh, I actually have. I have actually read because <clears throat> when this whole debate started, they were interviewing like Bruce Willis and they said no. They said that was not their intention. Their intention was not to make a Christmas movie that like was an action Christmas movie. They yeah. just had it set at Christmas because I think that was part of the like it Christmas brings people together, you know, so it made sense that Bruce Willis wanted to like they needed Bruce Willis to have to go to you know Los Angeles for a reason. Christmas party is a is a great reason. It's the time when people can get together and love and all of that. So it yeah. made sense to set it during Christmas, but they never actually intended for it to be a Christmas classic movie. So yeah. that's their take on it. Yeah, because I think it's one of those things. Like, I mean, we have a preconceived notion of what a Christmas movie is, but when you break yeah. down any of them, it, like, there's a lot of the same elements in this yeah. as them. Like, the the couple gets back together at the end. Yeah. Um, there just happens to be a lot of gunfighting between. <laughs> uh, like, he comes home for Christmas. Uh, yeah. There's Christmas music all through it. Christmas and Hollis by Run DMCs in it. There's like Christmas yeah. background music all the time. Bells. There was there's one scene where he's walking through like the like the boiler room. Um, and he's like like crouching through and there's like all this machinery and stuff. Somebody had spray painted Merry Christmas in black right onto like the side of the of one of the boiler, like one of the big metal boiler things. Like it like it's weird because why would you why would a like a worker, somebody who works there spray paint Merry Christmas on yeah. there? It's almost like they're trying to remind us that this is Christmas, it's still Christmas. So I feel like like even though they're saying it's not a Christmas movie, I feel like they were really pushing Christmas. Yeah. In this yeah. thing, like, I, well, there's I really people did. that don't intend to become heroes and then they become them, right? Like it's yeah. like they didn't. The intention wasn't to be to to make uh, have this become a Christmas movie, but I think the people have, like generally have spoken that it is. And when you yeah. really look at the elements, they're all there. Like everything that yeah. you need to have for a Christmas movie is there. Like because no one's really defined what an actual Christmas movie is. Like, right. Does it need to have a prince? Does it need to have like <laughs> you know like like you know, what we were talking about before with the Hallmark movies? Like is that? Yeah. But like again, a lot of those elements are in this movie, so That's it's right. they, this movie had a journalist the same way the Hallmark. Movies yes, do. it did. <laughs> <laughs> that right there, that alone qualifies it as a as a Christmas movie. Apparently, Santa was in, there was like a, like a Santa. I think there was a toy or something at one point. There's yeah. Santa uh christmas trees there was gifts there was like yeah. a homecoming there was like there was music like every element was in this movie it just happens to have an action movie attached to it as yeah. well i totally think that this qual this qualifies as a christmas movie and, yeah, and, and in fact it, but it's interesting because we're we're talking about this and you know what makes a christmas movie and it's in not all movies that are set in at christmas are considered christmas movies so for example lethal weapon Yep, was yep. another action movie just like this one and it was set at christmas but nobody really thinks about that as a christmas movie because it it doesn't have the same elements yeah. it didn't really push christmas it just like it sort of was bookended by christmas like beginning and end kind of thing but i don't think that you really had that same sort of feeling uh with this one um gremlins was also yep, set yep. during christmas but it's not really considered a Christmas movie. I've um, seen it on Christmas lists, but it's, yeah. I, I'd have to take another look at that again. Like th that it, I can, I can, cause does he get the gremlin as a gift? Yeah. He, a, so, yeah, he buys the Mogwai as a Christmas gift. Like it's, I mean, it is pretty Christmassy. Like it's, but I mean, have, do people talk about it as a Christmas movie? Yeah. Like it, uh, yeah. That one is a little more, but yeah, go on. What other yeah. ones? Um, Trading Places. Yeah, the, the Eddie Murphy one is Christmas. At one point, um, is it uh, Don Dan Aykroyd? Is that Dan Aykroyd in that movie? I can't remember. Uh, no, it's uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, he's dressed as Santa. Like yeah, he's you know. So there's a lot going on there. Eyes Wide Shut. Do you remember oh, the yeah. Stanley Kubrick movie with Tom Cruise? Um, that is definitely not your traditional Christmas movie, but it does not at all. Place, <laughs> it does take place during Christmas. Um, and the perennial favorite, Batman Returns. 
Oh, that's right too. Yeah, because that takes yeah. place at Christmas as well. It does, and and it's pretty Christmassy because that's when you have Max Shrek coming down to you know throw out presents to the crowd, and they're lighting the big tree and those things. But you don't really think about those as Christmas movies. Yeah. But but the debate is that Die Hard is definitely a Christmas movie. So what would set that apart from? Yeah, because like, technically, is like again, if they have the elements of a of Christmas in it, then they are technically a Christmas movie. Like they're, I, I guess. I mean, yeah. I guess like there's something to be learned, and like, because even in in Die Hard, John McClane learns a, a lesson of like being understanding, because he was so like, I'm not going to California, and and yep. he kind of blames it on her, but really it's him, right? Yep. And he learns that lesson through throughout this movie, and. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. It's, a, it's the other another movie I thought it was the ref. Oh yes, that that's yeah. another one that had like that had basically took place at Christmas as well. But yeah, I but don't that's know. like I, that's the kidnapping one, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. 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 So I mean, I, I I totally think I think it could, could be considered a Christmas. I think that there's there should be like a new genre of film that's like Christmas action movies, <laughs> or we, we call them cool Christmas movies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, 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 I thought of a question that would maybe help define it a little better. Is like, right. if you took Christmas out of the movie, right. would it would it still have the same effect? Hmm, that's a good question. Because I think if Die Hard, if you took the Christmas aspect out, I think the movie it falls apart. It doesn't have yeah. it, it. You need that in it in order to because it's the it's the whole Christmas idea of him coming home yeah. and trying to and trying to reconnect with his family. I think that's. Um, yeah, I, that that adds to the movie, and I think if you took that part out of it, the movie—it's not the same movie. The charm's gone of it. I think I think you're absolutely right. Like I think, I think like if you, if you look at it that way, I think like a movie like Gremlins, he could have just been buying a birthday present. Like he could have yep. made that, you know. So the movie still would have. I think the movie still would have worked. That movie yep. would have still worked because it could have just been a birthday present instead of a Christmas present. Yep. And then it's not Christmas, but it still would have been the same story. But you're right. This one, he had to come home to, you know, and there's that whole connecting at the beginning during the Christmas party. And it's all festive. And, you know, you just have these like warm feelings about him, about John McClane and all of that. And I think if it was like a, just like a get together in the summer. Like yeah, a it wouldn't have worked. It, it, no, like a backyard barbecue. It would yeah. have <laughs> It's the circumstances that really brought that that movie together. Like yeah. it's like the end of Rambo takes place at Christmas as well, but is that a Christmas movie? No, it just happens to be Christmas when he's there. So it's that's like, right. Yeah. So I I think uh, I think you're right. I think that uh, it is. If you take the Christmas out and the movie doesn't work, then it's the Christmas that makes it the movie. Yep. And I think yep. So I think I think right then and there, right there, Loop and Larry have <laughs> definitively find it given we have uh, to find it yeah we gave, we gave <laughs> basically we, just give us something to watch at christmas that's not like a hallmark movie yeah exactly. <laughs> we just need something that's all we're exactly. asking for <laughs> doesn't even matter but this is it i think you're right i think we have absolutely closed the book on the debate it's done is, is die hard a christmas movie yes it is yes it is all 100%. right <laughs> well thank awesome. you for joining us for our uh, die hard christmas special and uh Larry, I hope you have a great Christmas this year and a great holidays and safe yep. holidays, especially. Yep, safe and healthy, and uh, everybody will uh, stay contained in their own little homes. <laughs> <laughs> watching more movies and watching yep. more, more, geeking out on more stuff. And we'll, exactly. the next thing we're coming back for is our usual uh, um, recap of 2020. Yep, our year end review. <laughs> We call it the dumpster fire recap yeah. uh, of 2020, <laughs> but there's a lot of stuff released this year. So it should oh, be, yeah. it should be pretty good. So we will have enough to, to talk about. We'll probably have some other panelists on as well, like we did last year and it's, yep. it's going to be a good time. Guess. So to everybody yeah. out there, thank you for following us all this year on social medias and uh, just watching our, our podcast and watching it on YouTube, which is, which yeah. is new listening and, and then watching and uh, stay healthy and safe this holiday season and into the new year. And hopefully that vaccine will work and you and I will be back together at some point. Yay. I just want to give you a hug. <laughs> no, stay away. Okay. <laughs> See you next time. Bye-bye. Produced by Matthew C. Loop and Lawrence Simner. A Loop and Larry production. Bueller. He liked it. He liked it. Bueller. Bad news. Fog is getting thicker. And Leon's getting larger. Inconceivable. Brian's right. It's an elf. Wax on. Does Barry Manilow know that you raid his wardrobe? Oh, Captain, 
My captain. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. Wax off. <laughs>